So today was the first day of training camp for the Baltimore Ravens, and it started off with some bad news about Lamar Jackson. We're going to discuss that shortly. But the good thing is that it was filled with a lot of good, positive updates about some different players on the Baltimore Ravens, and we're going to go over all of that. Before we do, make sure you click the thumbs up button, leave a like on the video, and also subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on so you do not miss any single update when it comes to our Baltimore Ravens. So the day got started with all these players walking through the tunnel. We getting all hype. We like, oh, that player's back. Oh, he's in the building. Oh, yeah, all the players is here. Let's go, baby. And then the Baltimore Ravens, they issued a statement where they said Lamar Jackson, he has been sent home with an illness. Now, whenever Lamar Jackson's illnesses get announced, uh, I see so many people turn into doctors and medical experts, and they're like, oh man, Lamar Jackson, what's he doing getting sick? He gets sick every year. What's wrong with his immune system? He needs to start taking elderberry, this, that, and a third. And I get the concern because it's your favorite team's franchise quarterback. I understand it, but a lot of times I feel like with Lamar Jackson's sicknesses, they get a bit overblown. First and foremost, let me ask you a question. This is a rhetorical question, but you can answer it in the comment section if you would like. How many games did Lamar Jackson miss last year due to illness? I don't know, but I'm sure you'll know the answer. And also, where are we in terms of the time period of the season? Is this the regular season? Is this the playoffs? Is this the Super Bowl? Is Lamar Jackson uh, threatened to miss any of those games? Is he? Are we even in the preseason yet? No, so with, with everybody getting all worked up over Lamar Jackson being sick, again, I get the concern and I respect the concern, and I appreciate that for sure, but it's overblown. It, it, it's overblown simply because we're not even in preseason yet. Yeah, he did miss uh, the first day of training camp, and training camp is when it becomes real. They start putting the pads on. They really start uh, implementing the playbook and all that, but it's literally the first day. It's the first day. And again, it's not a regular season game around the corner. Regular season will be here soon, but him missing now, I would much rather him miss time now than in the regular season. Even if it was just practices in the regular season, I would rather him miss it now than then. So better to get it out of his system ahead of September, whenever that first game is against the Chiefs and so on and so forth too. Now, with Lamar Jackson and his sickness, I wasn't really tripping about it. I was like, okay, he got sick. All right, it is what it is. It happens. We all get sick from time to time. But then Jacina Anderson, she provided an update on it, and this is what she said. She said, Lamar Jackson's illness today was described to me as pretty bad, but we'll see how long it extends after preventing the Ravens quarterback from participating in the team's first training camp practice on Sunday. So... That made me a little concerned, but again, sickness, whatever it may be, whatever Lamar is dealing with, I'm sure you got to get it, just get it out of his system so he can keep pushing forward. And I'm sure he'll rejoin the Baltimore Ravens soon enough. And John Harbaugh, he was asked about Lamar Jackson today. He was asked about the sickness, what happened, like where it came from, what is it? And he said that Lamar Jackson started feeling sick yesterday. Um, and then it obviously got worse today to where it got bad and just he obviously couldn't go. So they, they sent him home uh, and they asked John Harbaugh, when is Lamar going to return? And he said, well, he's sick. So when he gets better. But that wasn't even my favorite part of John Harbaugh's part of the press of the day. Today, I heard and, and let me know if y'all agree or disagree in the comments section. But today was the most I've ever heard Lamar, uh, excuse me, John Harbaugh stick up for Lamar Jackson and I'm not saying he hasn't stuck up for Lamar Jackson before because he certainly has a lot of times but today today was different because today it just it was a lot more than what I'm used to from John Harbaugh even just him speaking about one subject in the press like he was going Jameson Hensley even said that he was talking about it for two minutes and 43 seconds now a quick three minutes that's, that's fast but at the same time for Harbaugh what he was saying on that part of the presser I was like oh wow um, but, and what he was saying, he was talking about how so many people in media and this and that, they, they, when they speak about Lamar Jackson, really just the Ravens in general, he said when he's scrolling, cause he, he, he said he sees it. He said he sees the stuff that people say about the team, about him and whatnot. He said for the good stuff, he'll look at it, he'll read it, he'll listen to it. But then he's like, ah, whatever. It, it, it ain't really nothing special. But he said for the bad stuff, the bad stuff that he sees, he said he really pays attention to that. And he says that they take it personal and that was cool and I'm like all right cool but then when he starts speaking about Lamar Jackson he talked about with Lamar Jackson he said Lamar takes that stuff personal too and he said that he he just he said it's frustrating how and I'm paraphrasing but basically he said it's frustrating how with Lamar Jackson that he's done so much 
He's done so much in this league already, but he still is questioned on what he can do. Uh, John Harbaugh talked about the Baltimore Ravens' vision for Lamar Jackson. He talked about how they envisioned him not being the best quarterback that ever played for the Baltimore Ravens, not being the best quarterback that's ever been in the AFC North. He said their vision for Lamar Jackson is him being the best quarterback to have ever played in the NFL ever played in the NFL. Uh, he spoke highly of Lamar Jackson. He spoke highly of Lamar Jackson's mom, Miss Felicia. So he, he he was really like, Harbaugh was really going in in a positive way, really repping for Lamar Jackson. And, and I appreciated him doing that a lot. I really did because you could tell John Harbaugh, this is something that he's been wanting to say for a while. This is something that he clearly been wanting to get off his chest for a minute. Because if somebody asks you a question, whatever the question may be, and, and you know with Harbaugh, like he'll, he'll answer the questions, enough of them, not all of them, but he'll answer enough questions to where, and he'll give you a, a quick answer or whatnot, but if it's something like th the way that he was speaking about Lamar Jackson today, and I would play it, but I ain't trying to get no copyright from the Baltimore Ravens, I don't need it, don't want it, no thanks, so y'all got to go watch it for yourself, but I really appreciated the way that Harbaugh really went in for his QB. So we got the bad news pretty much out the way. It's still a little tiny bit more sprinkled in here, but let's talk about some good, positive stuff that came from the Baltimore Ravens. This is from Jeff Threbit, where he talked about Arthur Millette had an interception on the ball that got deflected off wide receiver Malik Cunningham. Josh Jones took a few laps for free snap penalties. Ugh. So it, it, my focus wasn't really on that part of his reporting, but it was on this next part. Marlon Humphrey had a really strong practice, made a few plays on the ball, and looked in very good shape after nursing an injury in OTAs in minicamp. And, yeah, we remember that because Marlon Humphrey, he had missed some time in minicamp. And we were like, hold up, what's going on? Does he still have some lingering injuries from last year? Like, what's the problem with Marlon Humphrey? But the fact that he's back at training camp, he's practicing a full goal, that's a beautiful thing. But the good news ain't stopped there because he also said it was notable that Eddie Jackson, who officially signed this AM, was on the field and got a good number of reps. So Eddie Jackson was out there doing his thing and a positive on Eddie Jackson. Now, the past couple of years, he's been wearing a number four, and he ain't really been getting too many interceptions. But when he got all his interceptions before was when he was wearing an ugly number 39. And with the Ravens, he got on the number 39 because he ain't getting four because that's a Flowers number. So he, that's his Ravens jersey number, at least for now. So that's a good sign for him getting his hands on the ball. But anyway, um, this was another positive note. Two things, actually. It says, outside linebacker David Ajabo who had ACL surgery in November, was pretty much a full goal. So, oh, my goodness, it, this is just, it's, it's getting better. It's getting even better. So this is a great thing. I, I, I love this. That's great to hear. But it don't stop because he also said, as was Kyle Hamilton, who had off-season elbow surgery. So Kyle Hamilton, I remember when Harbaugh talked about it. He said, Kyle Hamilton, he's going to have some cleanup surgery on his elbow. And we was like, oh, oh, okay. But he did say that he expects him to be ready for training camp. Like, oh, oh, okay. But still, seeing is believing. We've been saying that for years. But Kyle Hamilton was out there, and we got to see him. Now, a couple of days ago, it was announced that TJ Tampa was being placed on the physically unable to perform list. And initially, I thought, okay, he's a rookie. Maybe he struggled with passing that conditioning test. I get it because I always hear how hard it is. I attempted it one time years ago. Oh, boy, and I was not in no good shape. Anyway. That's what I thought it was, that he didn't pass it, but we got clarity on exactly why TJ Tampa is out. It says TJ Tampa had hernia surgery after minicamp, so he'll be out a few more weeks. Now, so clarity is nice with that, but at the same time, um, him being out a few more weeks, little concerning because of the timing, especially with this Baltimore Ravens. Secondary, um, it's a, not many spots up for grabs, but a few. And we figured that TJ Tampa was going to be one of those. But him needing to recover from his surgery, this does set him back uh, a couple of weeks or however long he's out for. So hopefully he can have a, a recovery to where it's like, all right, I'm back. And he can make an impact on these Baltimore Ravens. But again, time will tell. But hopefully everything goes smooth or went smooth with his surgery and his recovery goes even better. Now, some more guys that weren't practicing for the Baltimore Ravens. Obviously, Lamar Jackson. Uh, obviously, Keith Mitchell, too. Um, TJ Tampa is another obvious one. But Adisa Isaac. Adisa Isaac, he still is not practicing for the Ravens. They placed him on the non-football injury list a couple days ago, if we, you all remember. Um, but he still is not out there yet, and it's still because of the hamstring. So, that's something to keep an eye on. So hopefully it's not a long-term thing, but we know them hamstrings, man. 
they can be funny they can be really short or they can end up going on for a long time. But hopefully this is not a continuous issue. It's been all eyes on Rashad Bateman uh, this off season. Uh, just people watching his every single move, watching his every single post, seeing what Rashad Bateman is going to do, seeing where he's at, seeing who he's hanging out with, what's he got going on. Rashad Bateman, he was present for day one of training camp. And he actually spoke at the presser. And I feel like all of y'all would appreciate what Rashad Bateman had to say. He said um, that the foot is healed. He said it's 100%. So his foot is good, and that's what we like to hear. And then this part, he said he don't want to talk about injuries. That's the past. I said, all right, all right baby. okay now, baby. Talk that talk, baby. Let's see, baby. He said it's not about him. And he said he wants to do what's best for the team, and he expects to have a bigger role. Now, I think we all definitely expect Rashad Bateman to have a bigger role than he's had. Um, he also talked about how he has to stay healthy and show Lamar consistency so Lamar can trust him, so Todd Munkin and Hobbs and just really everybody, they can put trust in him. And I'm like, that's real. That's real. Because, again, Rashad Bateman, all offseason, especially since he got his contract, he's been saying all the right things. Been saying all the right things. I know there were some people that gave him a little problem because he ain't he wasn't in Florida with Lamar and them when during the offseason and we ain't well we didn't see him excuse me because we don't know where he was at but we didn't see him I know what people they want to see it they they don't want to hear it, but they want to see it but since people didn't see it via social media a lot of people they've been up in arms with Rashad Bateman but he is here at training camp and this is where it counts the most but anyway this part right here he said that he, this is the most comfortable that he's been since he's been with the team now in the offseason or even in like the time that it is now, it's still technically off season. We hear a lot of these quotes. We hear a lot of these guys say, oh, yeah, this is the best shape that I've felt that I've been in my whole career. We hear different quotes like that every single year. And even stuff like this. Oh, yeah, this is the most comfortable that I've been since I've been with the team. But with Rashad Bateman, when you really think about it, it's real. It's honest. Um, at least when you look at all the logistics with Rashad Bateman, because his first year, um, it was him coming into the NFL. Like that's uncomfortable enough. It's like, oh, okay, I'm with the, in the I'm in the league now, and this is what I've aspired for. This is what I've wanted to do, but this is real now. So I'm here. Okay, let's see how this goes. So that was his first year, and then he had got hurt. He got hurt, so that messed up his rookie year. Then his sophomore season. Uh, he was there, and then again, same thing. But then the following year, and then he oh, then he got hurt during the season. So then the following year, last year, brand new offense, brand new offense. But not only that, Baltimore Ravens they signing Odell Beckham Jr. So it's like, oh, okay, somebody taking from off of what I was hoping to be my plate. Oh, the Baltimore Ravens, they also, they, they signed Nelson Aguilar. In fact, they signed Nelson Aguilar before Odell Beckham Jr. And he could be like, oh, man, somebody else taking off of my plate. And then on top of all of that, the day that they, they, they signed Nelson Aguilar, then they signed Odell Beckham Jr. And then the day of the first round of the draft, they signed Lamar Jackson to a contract extension. Just like, oh, yeah, let's go, baby. We were all hype. Oh, we were so happy, man, because that was, oh, those were some crazy times. Those were some crazy, crazy years. But anyway, first night of the draft, oh, Zay Flowers. Woo. So they not only signed Nel they s three significant wide receivers that they brought in. So that could make somebody very uncomfortable. But Rashad Bateman saying now this is the most comfortable that he's been. Odell Beckham Jr. is gone. Uh, Rashad Bateman expected to really be that number two for the Baltimore Ravens. Um, but this is also his second year at Tom Monkin's system. So there's just been a lack of consistency throughout Rashad Bateman's career. But now he's entering this year, year four, to where some consistency, it seems like, is being established. Um, and again, with his role expected to increase, we should expect a much better, a much more productive Rashad Bateman. That's what we're hoping for. So, But if he stays healthy, I think he'll be in good shape.